necessary for a neural tension test to be positive. Reproduction of symptoms, that's one. What's the change intensity when you change the distance? Yeah, affected by a distant segment, that's two. And the local That's kind of affected by a distant segment still. And one other one. Different from the other side. Asymmetry side to side. So lock those in your memory. Reproduction of symptoms affected by a distant segment and asymmetry compared to the other side. Okay. We're going to do the slump test first. What, uh, what nerve are we tensioning when we're doing the slump test? Sciatic. Good. Okay. So this is a very step-by-step -step process. So we try to keep it as systematic as possible. You can also add a goniometer to make it an objective measure to retest later as well. So your patient's gonna be seated on the edge of the plunge table, their legs are dangling. Their hands are gonna come behind their back like this. You're gonna instruct the, after they put their hands back here to slouch. So I want you to slouch down like it's the worst posture you've ever had in your life. You have my permission. Good, still kind of look forward. Okay. Now, I want you to, next we're gonna add knee extension. Okay, so straighten your knee. Just one? Yep. And you would say straighten your knee until you start to feel any type of discomfort in the back of your leg. Uh, how's that feel? A little tight, but not horrible. Okay, so then what can we do to wind up the system further? Flat, passively, dorsiflex. Okay, how you doing? That's great. <laughs> okay. okay, and then look down. Would we expect that to intensify or make it better when she looks down? Does yeah, does it? Uh, it was pretty tense. Yeah, it's still. So tense. then we can play around with it a little bit. So you're, here's one distant segment. Let's take off the ankle. Better? Yeah. Much yeah. Better. Good. Look forward. Better again. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Okay, good. And then relax. So your distant segment is your neck and your ankle uh, for the slump test. But the steps are hands behind the back slouch, you're still looking forward, active knee extension, passive knee ankle dorsiflexion, and then off and on with the head, off and on with the foot. What angle do you think we would measure to make this objective? So let's say they have full knee extension and it takes ankle dorsiflexion to reproduce their symptoms. Yes, you could measure ankle dorsiflexion. What else could you measure? You could measure cervical flexion. <clears throat> yeah, typically we're gonna measure the angle of knee of the knee first and, and really symptomatic patients. That's really gonna be what probably brings it on. So we're probably measuring the angle at the knee or the angle uh, at the ankle, but cervical definitely isn't out of the equation either. If that's you know what you what you need to, to wind the system up. And you would test both sides. So hands behind the back, slouch active knee extension, good, passive ankle dorsiflexion, and then add in cervical flexion. You can even add in overpressure, okay? Sciatic, <laughs> good. Okay, so what's our next sciatic tension test? Straight leg raise. So patient supine, the way the test is written is there's no pillow behind the head. Um, clinically, a lot of times we, we do have a pillow behind the head, but you want to take a, uh, just care to note the position of the neck because you want the cervical spine in a neutral position. Slide towards me. So again, we're thinking body mechanics here. You want the patient close to you so that you have control over their limb. You're going to start by holding above the ankle, um, kind of protecting the knee, just like you would if you're measuring what flexibility? Hamstring. Hamstring. You got it. Okay. Uh, foot's kind of just in a neutral, relaxed position at this point. Then you're going to slowly raise the leg until onset of discomfort or symptoms. Right about there? Yes. What angle would you measure? Hip flexion. Hip flexion. You got it. Okay. So then what could we do? What distance segments could we use to assess? Ankle. More. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else could we do? Yeah, curl your head up. Any change there? Not too bad. Okay, good. Okay. 
And then what could we do if we're trying to tease out peripheral symptoms into the leg? Ted Pipsid. Okay, so walk me through it. What's Ted? Tibial. Dorsiflexion. Yep. Okay, good there. Yep, perennial would be and inversion and plantar flexion. Good. So inversion and plantar flexion. Doing okay there? Yeah. Okay, what's the other one? Sural. Sural. Inversion and dorsiflexion. How are we doing there? And same thing, you could always add the cervical component if you're looking to see if it's affected by a distant segment. Okay, good. What's another nerve that we can test? Femoral. Good. So for femoral, what uh, position would we be in? Prone. Yeah, we'll start with prone. Powell. <laughs> So if, again, you want the, the cervical spine in a neutral position, so the vertebral column act as a whole. So if there isn't a face cut out, you can roll up a towel. I need another towel. <laughs> Place it under their forehead to, to give them room. You're okay there? Yeah. So you're gonna stand on the same side uh, as the nerve that you're gonna test. Of course, we're looking for an asymmetry side to side, so you're gonna test both. Stabilize the PSIS, foot's relax, and then you're gonna flex the knee. And for this, you're paying attention to onset of symptoms. And then what do you think you're gonna measure? Knee flexion. So we're looking for reproduction of pain, numbness, tingling. Okay, good, how you doing there? Good. And then what do you think we could, what would be our distant segment? Ankle. Ankle, right? So you could like pull your toes up and then pull your toes down and assess for effects that way. You could in theory do the cervical spine. You could have them kind of tuck their chin and then relax in that position. Or you could bring them into sideline if you're really trying to sensitize using the neck. And I'll show you what that looks like. So go ahead and lie on your side. Good, fly back towards me. Okay, so same thing, I'm bringing her closer to me so that I have more control. Um, I'll use this for now. Okay, so spine's in neutral. I'm gonna cradle under the knee, so I'm gonna bend your knee like that, so that I have control, and then I'm stabilizing the back of her hip with my trunk. Now I can either bring her into hip extension and knee flexion to wind up the femoral nerve a little bit better. And then we could always say, okay, tuck your chin. Okay, good. And then uh, look back. Yep, so you can add circles. <laughs> <laughs> so sideline, you're stabilizing the back. You're kind of supporting the knee in neutral. You can bend the knee with the femur in neutral. If you don't get anything there, you can add in hip extension to wind up the system a little bit better. Then you can bring in the, the foot, ankle, and or the cervical spine. How are we doing with those? Let's try them. 